Friends of our channel and YouTubers welcome. This video is to alert you to the biggest natural problem that we may have this year 2012. The Sun, Yellowstone and Canaries. Yellowstone in northwest Wyoming, land of geysers, mountains and lakes, is also sitting atop a super volcano. And it just took what scientists describe as a deep breath, causing miles of ground to rise dramatically. So what does this mean? Well, joining us right now is Michio Kaku. He is a physics professor at the City University of New York and the author of the upcoming book, Physics of the Future. Thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be on. So um, the last time this happened was 640,000 years ago. We're due. We are due. Forget Yogi Bear. Okay, forget Old Faithful. It's on sitting on top of a sleeping giant. Now, if you're sleeping next to an 800-pound gorilla, you monitor every burp, every snore of this gigantic gorilla because when it blows, it could destroy the United States as we know it. This is a, a pretty scary prospect. I want to just show people what we're talking about here when we talk about this super volcano, and we have a little... Uh, Thing to show you a map with some of the details. So that's where it is. It's um, under, beneath Yellowstone. It's been there, as we know. I guess this has erupted three times in 2.1 mil million years. Uh, but what they're worried about is the fact that they say that the ground has started to swell in levels that they have not seen before, 10 inches in some places in the past year. What does that tell us? It tells us that there is activity in this supervolcano, which erupts roughly every 600 million years. And the last eruption was 640 million years ago. Oh, 640 million or 1,000? 1, 1,000 years okay. ago. But that's what's making us very nervous, because the cycle time corresponds to the present-day era. So every single burp, murmur of this gigantic potential supervolcano, including the rise of the sea level, has to be watched very carefully. All right, so when we talk about this, and we have pictures, uh, we have, uh, pictures of Mount St. Helen erupting back in 1980. Let's just show this right now. You say that an explosion with this supervolcano under Yellowstone, and there we're seeing the Mount St. Helens, would be a thousand times bigger than this. What type of damage are we talking about here? We're talking about immediate damage out to 100 miles from the site that is total devastation, basically wiping out everything in sight. However, the real damage goes out to 500 miles, if you include volcanic ash, poisonous gases, death of wildlife and vegetation, and that's a ring about a thousand miles across. That's yeah, the heart line of America. Uh, it, it would pretty much wipe out Earth as we know it? It would wipe out the United States as we know it. Would there be anything we could do to prepare or to get people out? I mean, how much of a warning might we get with this eruption? All you can do is run. You don't get much warning. What happens is the, the ground starts to rise, more and more earthquakes take place, more ash and volcanic gases start to be unleashed. That's about the only warning we get, because we do not have a good way to predict volcanic eruptions. Are we getting a better way to do it, or are we just at the mercy of Mother Nature? We're still clueless. Uh, we're still monitoring it very carefully, looking for the warning signs. That's why this sudden rise in the earth, even though it's not immediately dangerous, is being looked at very carefully because we have no experience with supervolcanoes. We've seen Mount St. Helens, we've seen uh, Krakatoa, but a supervolcano erupting in our lifetime, we have no understanding of the scope of that thing. We just see the evidence of previous eruption. Now let's talk about the supervolcano El Hero in the Canary Islands. This volcano has intensified activities in a surprising way in 2011. Was about to explode if not the interventions of our friends Arcturians, which caused the pressure relief on the ocean floor, as shown in the pictures. Now, as these interventions ceased, nature should take its natural course. The island has swelled 5 inches vertically, and 6 inches horizontally. This shows that the pressure is incredibly high on the caldera beneath the island. If the worst happens, a tsunami of epic proportions will cross the Atlantic at up to 800 kilometers per hour in the directions of the three Americas. Everything is 30 kilometers from the coast will suffer the consequences. The increase in volcanic activity on the planet are due directly to the great increase in the incidence of channeled energy from solar flares increasing the temperature of the core and the magma of the planet, by effect microwave. The heated material expands, 
creating a general instability in the tectonic plates of the planet as a whole. The supervolcanoes are the exhaust valves of this huge pressure cooker, and we expect them to trigger sooner or later if the solar activity continues to rise the way it is. Let's hope for the best, but nature should take its course as the designs attributed to our planet, in this change of age. The smaller volcanoes, no less destructive for their large number, are distributed in the contact zones of tectonic plates, and these are increasingly unstable, not only in the Pacific Ring of Fire, but on the whole planet. This can lead to earthquakes of large proportions, followed by localized tsunamis that just as the last of Japan, which can devastate coastal regions around the globe. Be at peace with your consciences, because one thing the man has not yet learned to control, the force of nature. Now with respect to the government elite, and its wars of interest and control, we can get rid of them some time from now, be sure. Thanks for watching, join our channel. You are welcome to open mind there.